I hope you have been following our lessons on motion control related topics. Recently, RealPars have published video lessons on what are servo and stepper motors and how they work. I hope you've had an opportunity to watch. Now that we've learned about motion control motors, we can begin to apply this knowledge towards motion control applications. In this lesson, we discuss what is linear motion control and a few real world applications with respect to linear motion, positioning systems, and actuators used with stepper and servo motors. Linear motion control, in part, demands much on the actuator, and the linear actuator covers a broad range of products. A linear actuator is a mechanical device that converts energy, such as the power from air, electricity, or liquid, to create motion in a straight line, and it may be used to apply a force. In this lesson, we will focus on how the electrical mechanical aspects of linear motion control are applied when using stepper or servo motors. Before we get into today's video, if you love our videos, be sure to click the like button below and make sure to click subscribe and the bell to receive notifications of new RealPars videos. This way, you never miss another one. Linear motion is an area of motion control encompassing several technologies, including linear motors, linear actuators, and linear rolling guides and bearings. Linear control systems and actuators are used in industrial automation and machinery, machine tools, computer peripherals such as disk drives and printers, home automation, packaging, assembly, medical imaging and diagnostics, electronic manufacturing, industrial test and inspection, and robotics applications. Linear drives move the carriage to the desired positions. The most common drive technologies are ball screw drives, lead screw drives, and belt drives. Linear motion control system configuration, including the number of axes of motion, is often the first factor that needs careful thought. The most common are two axis, X and Y configurations, but less complex single axis applications and three axis configurations are also possible. Many factors need careful consideration when selecting a suitable linear motion control system for a single axis, two axis, or three-axis positioning system. System orientation and mounting are key factors. In a single-axis linear system, this is fairly straightforward, but in multiple-axis systems, this becomes more complex. Factors to consider here include the direction of travel of each axis. Does the load need to be moved simultaneously in multiple axes? or does each axis move individually, and does the system require a moving carriage or a moving rail, and are the axes vertical, horizontal, or inclined? And finally, are the mounting positions of each actuator at 0, 90, or 180 degrees to the horizontal? Additional specification when considering linear motion control design for an application are force, speed, travel distance, accuracy and repeatability, and lifetime requirements or the duty cycle and of the machine. In determining how much force is required, the weight of an object being lifted and or the amount of friction of that object needs to be overcome. Knowing the mass of an object to be moved and its center of gravity as it moves relative to a coordinate point on each axis must also be calculated to determine the force requirement. This calculation needs careful consideration so that the moment loads or the turning effect of a force at multiple points in the system can be established. Next, you'll need to determine the speed on how fast in millimeters per second or inches per second the actuator will need to move. Determining the speed 
combined with the force, will give you the mechanical power required and how powerful the motor must be. Traverse speeds and traverse times are somewhat limited with ball screw drives. Ball screw actuators typically have a maximum speed of 3 meters per second. And for belt drive actuators, the maximum speed is around 8 to 9 meters per second. The highest acceleration of any linear motion control actuator is around 40 meters per second per second. However, typical accelerations are much less than this, often between 0.5 meters per second per second and 5 meters per second per second. Deceleration is also important, especially if emergency stops are required. You'll need to define how far your load or actuator needs to travel. This is known as the stroke length. Many actuators come in standard sizes. It's best to choose an actuator close in size to your requirements versus having a custom actuator built to save cost. Knowing the total stroke length for each axis is critical when specifying your system requirement and will help in determining the correct type of linear motion control drive system. With ball screw linear actuators, for example, the stroke length is limited to the length of the ball screw itself. Therefore, maximum stroke lengths tend to be around 3 meters. But with belt driven systems, there are no such restrictions, and so stroke lengths can be higher than this, up to as much as 20 meters if required. If linear motors are specified, the stroke length is unlimited, normally around 10 meters. In addition, you will need to determine lifetime requirements or the duty cycle. Duty cycle is defined in how often the actuator will operate and how much time will elapse between movements. Duty cycle is based on the number of expected repetitions per unit of time in hours per day, minutes per hour, and or strokes per minute. Cycle times determine the life of a linear motion control system. The repetitive motion of back and forth or up and down movements produces friction, and this friction creates wear and tear on the system components. This cycle time or duty cycle is critical criteria in determining the operating life on just how long you want your system's investment to last. Accuracy and repeatability are one of the most considered overall for the system, in which may deliver the desired quality or precision required in the system or manufactured end product. If the application, for example, is for an automated pick and place machine, high repeatability and accuracy are most likely required. Typically, the accuracy of a ball screw linear actuator is 0.16 millimeters per meter with repeatability of plus or minus 0.01 millimeters. For belt drive actuators, the accuracy is around 0.5 millimeters per meter, with repeatability of plus or minus 0.10 millimeters. Other considerations are whether to use limit switches or feedback devices, such as potentiometers and encoders, for positioning purposes. There are many linear type actuators to choose from, such as, for example, screw actuators and belt actuators. Screw actuators include lead screw actuators, ball screw actuator, and planetary roller actuators. Lead screw actuators having a threaded nut that moves with a screw. Screw driven positioning systems are used in applications where accuracy and repeatability are more critical. These positioning tables use either an ACME or ball screw as the drive mechanism. Bearings are used to carry the load of the application. Lead screw solutions provide both simple construction and lowest cost. Many electromechanical designs incorporate a lead screw and lead nut, while some use a ball screw and ball nut. In either case, the screw may be connected to a motor either directly or through a series of gears. 
Gears are used to allow a motor to be geared down to provide torque necessary to rotate the screw under a heavier load the motor would be capable of controlling directly. Rotary motion of the motor is converted into linear displacement of the actuator. A lead screw has a continuous helical thread machined on its circumference running along the length, similar to the thread on a bolt. Threaded onto the lead screw is a lead nut or ball nut with exact helical threads. The nut is normally fixed and prevented from rotating with the lead screw. When the lead screw is rotated, the nut is driven along the threads. The direction of motion of the nut will depend on the direction of rotation of the lead screw. Connecting the load to the nut, the motion can be converted to usable linear movement. Ball screw actuators use ball bearings and are more expensive, but provide less friction compared with lead screw actuators. In a ball screw drive, ball bearings travel along the grooves in a threaded shaft and the ball screw and recirculate through a ball nut. Because bearings share the load, ball screw linear motion drives have relatively high thrust capacity. A ball screw drive combines repeatable motion and a stiff system that handles high forces and moments. Such systems work well in precision positioning applications with high loads and high duty cycles. Planetary roller screw actuators use threaded rollers surrounding the main threaded shaft and are the most expensive option, but also the most durable. Belt-driven linear positioning tables are based on using belt drives and in high speed and or long travel positioning applications where a screw actuator is not practical, normally in stroke lengths over six feet. The belt and pulley drive mechanism provide modestly repeatable high-speed positioning. Belt drives are quiet and good for high-throughput, lower-precision applications. More expensive ball screw drives provide high-efficiency, accuracy, and stiffness. Belt-driven ball-guided units are for high-speed, high-acceleration applications with heavy payloads and high-moment loads. Integrated linear motion control positioning systems are easy to use and can be acquired as a turnkey system. Most of these pre-configured positioning systems are comprised of base, ball screw, and servo stepper motor with integral controller and drive for rapid machine commissioning and ease of operation. There are many companies in the linear motion control market providing complete solutions for a variety of linear motion control applications. These companies will provide engineering support for motor sizing and turnkey linear actuator recommendations. There are many vendors providing software products that will help the end user, or OEM, with the design and selection process of a stepper servo motor and a linear actuator. Knowing what we discussed in the lesson, will help you with the information required in the system selection process. For example, this picture of a software program illustrates, after answering a few questions, the motion profile plot and the motor requirements of a system. Examples of linear motion control applications for industrial machines are used with positioning loads, palletizing, packaging, pick and place operations, filling operations, and automated warehouses. You'll also find linear motion used in cutting machines and painting machines. Linear motion for medical application uses, such as in operating room beds, x-ray machines, MRI and CT scanners, as well as dentist chairs. Linear motion for medical diagnostics and treatment used in scan heads and patient tables. Other areas include oncology, nuclear medicine, CT, MRI imaging, portable respirators, and surgical robots. Linear motion in medical lab automation is used for pick and place, DNA sampling, cell culture, air displacement drug testing, and drug dispensing.
it is critical in these applications to have good reliability and low to zero maintenance to help minimize downtime and maximize clean operation and speed. Successful lab automation operation can reduce end user costs and speed delivery of medical products. An overhead conveyor system is a convenient solution when an assembly line requires a steady flow of materials to key assembly areas along the line. This conveyor system can also be used to position assembly tools and equipment. The benefits of this quick pay system, normally found on an assembly line, assists operators moving equipment accurately and lowers the overall risk of fatigue and injuries. The food industry places high demands on material handling equipment. Harsh conditions found in places such as dairies, bakeries, and breweries suggest equipment is exposed to extreme temperatures, water splashdown, dirt, and cleaning agents. The equipment is required to be fast and accurate to keep up with high-speed production lines. These are just a few of the many applications used in many industries. This concludes the video, What is Linear Motion Control? I hope you've learned what's required to move forward in creating your own motion control project. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button. This video is one of a series of videos on motor and motion control, so please check back with us soon for more motion control topics. Make sure that you head over to realpars.com to find even more training material for all of your PLC programming needs. We offer many videos to assist you in learning PLC programming and landing that job in the high-paying, highly sought-after field of automation and controls engineering. Go to realpars.com and subscribe to our highly effective training series now.